You know, I, I, I think that, uh, that farming is a unique, unique occupation, a unique lifestyle, a unique life. I, it, it, it's all of, all of that. I mean, it's... So, uh, my name is Patrick O'Leary. Um, I am part of a fourth generation farm. Currently, I farm with my father and three brothers um, near Danvers, Minnesota. We farm about 4,800 acres of cropland. Of that, about two-thirds corn, one-third soybeans. Typically, the rotation changes a little bit depending on our our year and what the what the market looks like and all those decisions that we make. We also custom raise uh, about 21,000 pigs a year. We have capacity to hold 7,000 pigs in our barns. Um, so my brothers operate the two pig barns, um, sell a little bit of seed to other farmers, and uh, so we, we have a little diversification, do a little custom spraying for a few farmers in the area and, and things like that. So we keep ourselves quite occupied. So we're uh, trying to take the technology on the farm and do, uh, you know, for multiple reasons, cost savings and some um, uh, also environmental reasons to try to control the amount of, of fertilizers and pesticides and insecticides we're putting out there so we've taken a lot of there's a lot of efforts on the farm and all the equipment to bring the technology as, as current as we can to make sure that we're we're meeting those needs and also still raising a, a, a good crop. This is the John Deere R4045 pieces at the farm that uh, uh, as far as controlling what we do in the field one of the highest technology this sprayer actually has the ability to control individual nozzles and also control chemical rates on the go. Um, we do direct injection, so we, we take a lot of time to make sure that when we're applying any kind of chemical that we're doing it as precise as we can. Um, the fertilizer spreader also is a variable rate machine, so we can place fertilizer at, at uh, specific rates um, on different parts of of the, the farm and the field so we have a lot of farms that we've gone out and geared sampled so we know pretty specific areas of the farm that need more fertilizer or less fertilizer though so, so we've had a, a really interesting year here in minnesota in this part of minnesota uh, we started quite early uh, i think our first corn we started on april 20th if i believe correct we planted all the corn in about uh, a week's time uh, we put in about three thousand acres of corn in that week um, conditions were variable, but but much better than we've had in the past few years. So we were eager to put the crop in the ground because they uh, we went immediately following corn, um, put the soybeans in. We had all the crop planted by May 3rd this year, which is quite early for us. The growing season was pretty interesting here. So we started out uh, dry. Uh, the first few weeks of June, we had little or no rain. Uh, went from dry to having some moisture and then getting to um, early August and going another three weeks or better that we didn't have uh, didn't have rain again. And following that droughty time in August, we got a little bit of rain, but then we got an early frost in uh, the first part of September, which uh, it appears that took some of our top end yield out of the later soybeans. The corn don't think it impacted quite as much, but the later soybeans it did. So this year, um, for us, our earlier soybeans look quite a bit better. I would say a little bit above average. Um, our later planted soybeans more of an average crop. Um, quality looks good on them. Um, so I, I think we probably got three or four days of soybean harvest left depending on how it goes when we get started here. So we're on the, on the downside of the, uh, the soybean harvest. My goal is always to be done by Halloween, so I got, I got them off. <laughs> yeah, on the soybean marketing side, uh, we don't store any soybeans. So, it's uh, important for us to market soybeans uh, in advance of the fall. So we did market quite a few of our soybeans, actually uh, about the time the rally started. Um, we've had an interesting market with the soybeans because we've had a, a rally in the prices at, at the harvest time. Um, so we've been able to capture a little bit of that. Um, but uh, the marketing we do uh, on the farm with the corn and the soybeans, we do a mix of hedge derived contracts. We do some cash sales. Try to sell throughout the year. I know that I can't ever hit the highs. I'm just trying to stay away from the lows. <laughs> so I, so I have served uh, on the Minnesota Soybean Research and Promotion Council for, I think I'm starting my seventh year um, on there. I have 
um, been enrolled with Northern Soy Marketing, which is a group that, that talks about the quality of soybeans with international customers. Um, I also have been, I've chaired the, the council in the past. I currently chair the uh, market development uh, team or uh, the promotion team, maybe we call it today, on the, uh, on the council. I, uh, we look forward to those days that we get back to normal, and they will come, that we get that uh, we enjoy at the farm hosting international guests and, and let them see our operation, and, and uh, it's different. If you can see it firsthand, it's, uh, it's different.